Elon Musk was just now interviewed by Katie Miller on the Katie Miller podcast. It was a wide-ranging interview. So today we gathered together the four clips where he discussed AI, Starship, Starbase, and why the future is going to be wild. In the first clip, Elon talks about a future where AI and robots handle nearly all work. Humans might not need jobs at all. But here's the kicker. It's not necessarily a future that he wants. In the future, that no one's going to need to worry about money or work because AI is going to take care of the rest, AI and robotics. What do you mean that people won't have to work in the future? Assuming the current trend of artificial intelligence and robotics continues, which seems likely, the AI and robots will be able to do anything that, that humans want, to, want them to do, essentially. Hopefully not more than that, but AI and robotics will be able to provide us provide all the goods and services that anyone could possibly want. But um, you wouldn't need to work? What would you do with your free time? People will be able to do whatever they want with their free time. Work will be optional. I just want to separate out from what I wish would happen versus what I predict will happen, because people get confused about that. They think that what I predict will happen is what I want it to happen. Yeah. What, I want, what I predict to happen is not the same as what I want to happen. I, if I could, I would certainly slow down AI and robotics, but I can't. It just seems to be, it's advancing at a very rapid pace, whether I like it or not. Is AI what keeps you up at night? It used to be. At this point, I don't know. I wouldn't say there's nothing particularly keeping me up at night right now. Except that, <laughs> but if you say, what, where, what, where do I wake up in nightmares? Oh, AI, yeah. I, actually, I've had a lot of AI nightmares. I've had AI nightmares many days in a row. What am I supposed to do about it? What Elon's describing, honestly, it sounds straight up science fiction, but he really thinks this is where we're headed. If AI keeps moving at the pace it is right now, it could replace almost every job we know. Imagine a world where working is optional. You only do it because you want to, not because you need a paycheck to survive. And for Tesla investors, this is massive. Tesla isn't just a car company anymore. It's basically one of the biggest real-world AI and robotics labs on the planet. When Elon talks about AI and robots providing almost everything we need, he's talking about robo-taxis running around on their own, optimists doing physical labor, factories running themselves, and software managing transportation with barely any human involvement. If even a slice of that vision turns into reality, Tesla's current valuation might look tiny compared to where it could go. But here's the part people miss. Elon doesn't actually want this future. He thinks it's coming whether we like it or not. And honestly, that's pretty rare. He's not hyping it. He's admitting he's watching something unfold that's way bigger than him. So when he says he has nightmares about AI, that's not a joke. This is the guy building real robots, real self-driving cars, and neural networks that control millions of vehicles. His fear isn't, oh no, someone might beat us. It's more like this thing is accelerating faster than anyone can control. So the takeaway here is pretty wild. Elon believes two things at the same time. AI automation is basically unavoidable, and he's not fully comfortable with how fast it's happening. So from AI taking over work, let's switch gears to something even bigger, rockets. Elon believes Starship could change human history forever. In the next clip, Elon reflects on his life, then dives into why he thinks Starship is one of the most important technologies ever. It's full reusability is a game changer. What's one moment in your life that you could live again just to feel it? I've seen when my kids were born or the first time SpaceX got to orbit or Tesla made an electric car work. You've had a big, a lot of them. It's a lot of, it's a lot of things. There's a lot coming down the pike. Like what? Starship. The degree to which a Starship is a revolutionary technology is not well understood in the world. And it's the first time that there's been any rocket design where full and rapid reusability is possible, or full reusability at all is possible. This is the first design where a reusable rocket is one of the possible outcomes, where success is in a set of possible outcomes. Are you talking about and V3 or V2? We could have made V2 reusable, but, the, but we, there were a lot of performance improvements for V3. So it made sense to go to V3. There's just <laughs> there's 10,000 different changes between V2 and, 
be three, maybe more than 10,000 really. At Starship, if there are historians in the future, they'll look back and, at Starship and say it was one of the most profound things that ever happened. Absolutely. But notice how quickly Elon jumps from talking about personal stuff, his kids, Tesla, SpaceX, straight to Starship. He doesn't treat it like just another project. This isn't a small upgrade. This is the kind of thing that changes entire civilizations. Full and rapid reusability. It sounds simple, but it's massive. Right now, rockets are basically throwaway items. You launch one, it burns up or splashes into the ocean, and then you have to build a brand new one. Imagine if airlines toss their planes after every flight. It makes no sense at all. But Starship can launch, land, refuel, and go right back up over and over again. If SpaceX pulls this off, the cost of getting to space could drop by 100 times. Suddenly, things that sound insane, asteroid mining, re regular trips to Mars, moving car cargo from orbit to orbit, even space tourism, and of course now AI data centers, they become realistic. And those explosions during Starship tests, that's not failure. They're not failures. They're just data helping the next launch happen faster. And here's the part Tesla investors should pay attention to. Starship matters for Tesla too. AI training at scale, satellite networks, future mobility services, those could all tie into space-based systems. SpaceX and Tesla aren't two separate worlds. They're pieces of the same long-term mission, pushing humanity beyond Earth. If this works, historians won't just look back at the wars or elections. They're going to point to the first rocket that didn't die after a single flight. That rocket is Starship. That was a fantastic moment. So from rockets that could change human history, let's see the place that makes it all possible, Starbase. Elon explains how Starbase came to be, why it needed an inspirational identity, and how it became a legally incorporated city and what used to be just a sandbar. What the idea for Starbase? I think we needed a, something inspirational. I can't wait. We have a lot of star things. So we've got Starlink, Starship. Where would... Starship depart from Starbase. The Starbase is, as you mentioned, is, I think it's probably the coolest place on Earth. I agree. And it, it used to be a sandbar down by the Rio Grande. It's only three feet above sea level. So we built a gigantic rocket factory and two giant launch towers down by the river, literally within sight of the Rio Grande and on an actual sandbar. Kind of had to have an inspirational name. And then we made it a city. So it's an incorporated city, like legally a city. You don't hear about new cities being formed that often. The last time there was a company town, it was Disney World. <laughs> yeah, I think Ford had some kind of like company town situations. But yeah, just Disney World is, <laughs> it's literally its name. Yeah. I'm Walt Disney, this is my world. I've gone from land to world. Yeah, I got incorporated as a city and got tax exemption, which was like a whole, was a big deal. Yeah. Only Elon, only Elon will look at a sandbar and think, yeah, let's build one of the most advanced rocket sites on earth right here. Perfect conditions don't matter to him. He builds first and then the place becomes meaningful because of what he puts there. And calling it Starbase wasn't some cute branding decision. SpaceX already had Starship and Starlink. Starbase is the physical anchor for the whole long-term plan of going beyond Earth. For investors, this isn't, this isn't just a spot to assemble rockets. It's the infrastructure for a multi-planet future. When Elon calls something a city... He's telling you it's not temporary. You don't build a city for a one-off project. Elon even compares Starbase to Disney World. Not because of the rise, obviously, but because it's a fully governed, fully incorporated zone. Instead of roller coasters, <laughs> you get launch towers the size of skyscrapers and engines designed for interplanetary travel. And if you're a Tesla fan, think about what happened with Giga Texas. It didn't stay just the factory. It became a whole ecosystem, right? You got engineering, suppliers, robotics, testing, everything. Starbase is the same idea, just scaled way bigger. Engineers, suppliers, supply chains, research labs, robotics, maybe even space tourism down the road. Boca Chica wasn't picked for very specific reasons. Ocean access, closeness to the equator for better launches, and being far enough from big neighborhoods. Elon took a forgotten stretch of coastline and he basically turned it into the coolest place on Earth. Starbase isn't just a launch pad. It's the first foundation for life beyond Earth. 
in 100 years, nobody's going to care about which EV company sold the most units. They're going to care about who built the first gateway off the planet. And that gateway is Starbase. Now, from rockets and AI, Elon gets even deeper, talking about technology we might hope never exists and the most interesting outcome for humanity. Elon discusses tech he hopes is never invented, like man-made viruses or anything that could wipe out consciousness. Then he shares his theory that the future tends to be dramatic, surprising, and most interesting. What's one invention that's made us worse, not better? What's one adventure that's made us worse? Invention. Maybe short form video. <laughs> it seems to be rotting people's brains. What's one piece of technology you hope never gets invented? I, that I hope never gets invented? Yeah. Like it's going to destroy us all. Or you think with the proper safeguards. Obviously, I hope like that people don't invent a virus that can kill all humans. That's an obvious sure, thing. Yeah. Gen yeah, generally, I hope like inventions that destroy <laughs> consciousness are not invented. I think the future is going to look very interesting. So it's, I do have this theory about the predicting the future, which is that the most interesting outcome is the most likely, which, if simulation theory is accurate, makes sense, because if anyone is simulating a wide range of futures, they're going to stop the simulation when it gets boring. Because this is what we do in our reality. So if, if SpaceX is doing, or Tesla doing simulations to understand how a car would work or a robot or s spaceship or something like that, we run all these simulations in the computer. And the simulations that we pay attention to are the ones that are the most interesting. The simulation where everything goes right on the rocket, we actually don't pay attention to because that's not a everything goes right simulation is fine. So we're, we actually test, the, when we simulate the rocket flight, we'll actually test all sorts of oddball situations. But we don't test it, we don't have the simulation be totally wrong, because if the rocket just explodes immediately, that's not also not interesting. So it's like you'd, you'd need to find the envelope of possible flight paths where the rocket can make it to orbit and uh, without exploding and then you find those boundaries, and then when you launch the actual rocket, you try to, you make sure it stays within those boundaries. Or another way to think of it is like we, we could be an alien Netflix series, <laughs> and that series is only going to get continued if our ratings are good. Are the ratings good? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you can think of it like from a Darwinian standpoint. Apply it, if you apply Darwin to simulation theory, then the, only the most interesting simulations will continue. Therefore, the most interesting outcome is the most likely because it's either that or annihilation. So really, we have one goal. Keep it interesting. Isn't it great? Oh, boy. Love Elon. So for Elon, technology isn't just about making life easier. For him, it's literally tied to humanity's survival. So there are some inventions he thinks we shouldn't just be building. He's not against progress. He's against charging forward without thinking. Then he brings up his most interesting outcome idea. So basically, history tends to move forward towards the wildest, most dramatic version of events. Electric cars taking over, rockets landing upright, AI rewriting entire industries. It really does feel like we're living in a crazy plot twist version of reality and it's happening right in front of our eyes in our lifetime. And when he jokes that humanity is like a TV show that only survives, it's a rating stay high. Yeah, it's funny, but he's not entirely kidding. Progress isn't clean or predictable. Tesla, SpaceX, AI, it's all messy. It's breakthroughs followed by failures, big wins followed by chaos. That's how real innovation looks. So I always ask myself, like, are we in a simulation? Who knows? But the speed of change is absolutely real. Look at the last five years. EVs everywhere. Autonomy getting closer. Rockets landing themselves. AI writing code. Robots walking around factories. No other era moved like this. And here's the key for investors. Elon believes progress is inevitable, but he doesn't think it's automatically good. He wants guardrails, especially for AI and biotech. The future is going to be fast, intense, and unpredictable. From AI reshaping jobs, to rockets rewriting history, to building cities on literal sandbars, Elon's vision is bigger, crazier than most people realize. Tesla, SpaceX, and all the AI work he's doing aren't separate stories. They're pieces of a future that's already unfolding, and it's definitely not slowing down for anyone. 
Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.